it's wild up here being on top of the hill. All the locals said to me, why would you buy a hill? And my kids still say, oh, Dad, we wish you bought a flat block of land. It makes it so special because when it's cold, you know it's so cold. And when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's windy, it's so windy. The tiny home's two 20-foot shipping containers and they're 15 square metres each. It's certainly a unique experience coming to stay in our tiny home. You really get a chance of reconnecting with nature and it's pretty special. I'm Alice and this is Robbie. We've been building this tiny home over the last six years and we've finally finished it. The tiny home is located in Mansfield, which is a small country town in Victoria, Australia, and it's about 180 kilometres from Melbourne. The property is unique. It's a big, rocky, steep hill. The views are amazing. You can watch the weather coming in from forever away. There's lots of wildlife around here. If you're lucky, you'll see some deer, echidna, kangaroos, wombats. We bought this block with the intention of building a family home one day, but we wanted to use the block right away, so we decided to build some tiny homes. So when we eventually moved out, we always had the intention to keep this place for family and friends to come and stay, and then share it with the world on Airbnb. It's been really interesting to see the kind of Airbnb guests that come and stay. We've had a lot of architects and interior designers, people that are really passionate about the design and they want to see how it all works. We've also had people that just come to unplug and reconnect with nature. This tiny home is made up of two containers. We use one as a living room and a kitchen and the other one we use as a bedroom. They're both designed the same way, so they could both be separated in the future. I just wanted this to be a tough, movable tiny home. Everything was just designed that I could drop it off a truck. Once it was there, it was done. Because the ground's not level, the containers ended up being a little higher off the ground. So between the two containers, I built some steps with rock that I just got from around here. If I ever move the container, I can pick up the cages and move them as well. The tiny home is off-grid, but I wanted it to be comfortable for when Alice and the kids came and stayed. So it's uh, got power and hot water and a flushing toilet. They've got solar panels on the roof and a roof that catches water. I built boxes on the back of each container for the batteries, the generator and the gas bottles. And it also works as extra storage. The outside of the containers, I just tried to keep them looking like a shipping container. Shipping containers are just harsh and industrial. So the paint I used, it's just an industrial heavy duty paint. The mesh does help uh, shade the building a little bit. The profile slows down a midday sun and allows a morning sun to come through. So that was more about keeping the place camouflaged. I didn't want the glass to stand out and reflect in the sun. The outside of the tiny home has the big deck that drops down on hydraulics. Uh, I built that with the help of my uncle. He uh, specialises in hydraulics. When it's all closed up, it still fits on a truck, but uh, once it's in position, you can press a button and the deck drops down, and then when the glass wall lifts up, it a little bit more than doubles the usable space of the container. For the interior of the tiny home, it's all lined with plywood, just because it's more true to what a shipping container really is. The kitchen's built out of plywood. It's got a wood burning stove that heats the container, but you can also cook on. There's also room for a small fridge. All the ply cabinetry I drew and a friend of mine with a CNC machine cut it on his computer. It's got grooves to allow the shelf heights to change, which I thought was pretty cool. The fireplace gets really hot and I also needed to keep the bathroom private so I had a piece of steel folded to give privacy to the bathroom. When I did that I also got these little tongues cut into the sheet that I folded out and that way you can hang your towels on it. 
the steel heats up being next to the fireplace so it dries your towels quite quickly. The dining room table, it's uh, useful when it's open. Uh, we eat on it and prepare meals on it. But when the space is not being used for cooking, it folds into the wall and it just makes the area bigger to hang out in. The living room also has a double bed. The timber in the bathroom is lined with a epoxy resin that they use on boats. So if it can make a boat last in the water, it should last as a shower. The shower base is timber. It's a similar hardwood to what the floor of the container is. It's raised off the ground a little bit, so you have to step up into it. I did that so there was no plumbing hanging out the bottom of the shipping container, which means it can still slide on the back of a truck easily. Just like the other container, everything in the bedroom container folds away. So it's got the triple bunk and the double bed. The mattresses are camping mattresses. They're an air foam combination, uh, they're self-inflating and they're a Cedar Summit. We tested a few and these were comfortable. It's got half of a kitchen set up, so yeah, down the track I could also use a kitchen in that container. It's still got a bathroom so you don't have to go outside in the middle of the night. Something really special about the sleeping container is the spectacular view from the bed. The big windows really frame Mount Buller and you've also got a beautiful view into a gully. The outdoor fireplace is quite big. It's a laser cut steel that I welded together up here and I had a chimney flue rolled out of more Corten steel just so uh, when you'd light the fire out there and if you had the, the big door open in the containers, the containers wouldn't get full of smoke. I also uh, built it with the option that you can put some barbecue grills in the bottom and when you have some coals going you can cook on top of it. What we love most about hosting is giving people a really unique experience. The guests really like it when Robbie comes down and greets them. He talks them through how the tiny home works, how it was built. Yeah, not everyone has lived off grid in such a tiny home before. What's been pretty cool about putting it on Airbnb is having a steady income, which we can put towards our next project. I put a lot of effort into these containers and uh, we've had such a really cool group of people come through. It's been nice to have it appreciated by a lot of nice people. Thanks for watching. To receive updates on our latest episodes, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.